Vivek Iyer. I'm an assistant professor of medicine in the division of uh, pulmonary and critical care medicine uh, here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The title of the article is the use of uh, intravenous bevacizumab for the treatment of uh, severe HHT-related bleeding. And HHT stands for hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, also known as ostler weber Rondo disease. As a brief background, this is an autosomal dominant uh, disease that basically affects uh, every uh, vascular bed in the body, uh, causing uh, the formation of AVMs, or telangiectasias. And the biggest problems patients face as they age is bleeding. And this mainly comes from two sites, the nose and the intestinal tract. And uh, we previously published a study which showed that as patients age, uh, bleeding actually becomes the number one cause of hospitalization uh, amongst patients with HHT. This is based on a large uh, nationwide study of almost 10,000 HHT patients. So about uh, four uh, years ago, we started using uh, Avastin for the treatment uh, of uh, HHT patients. I use the word Avastin because when we started uh, the study, this was the only bevacizumab formulation out there, and that's the one we used for the study. I understand that we do now have a generic uh, bevacizumab uh, also on the market. So we use bevacizumab intravenously for the treatment of severe HHT-related bleeding. So these patients uh, who have bled severely from their nose and also from the intestinal tract. And we had a total of 34 patients. About 15 of these, uh, pr their primary source of bleeding was from the nose or severe epistaxis. Another 15 had uh, isolated severe GI bleeding. And uh, four patients had both epistaxis and GI bleeding. Uh, about 16 of these 34 were transfusion dependent. And they had received a median of 75 units of blood uh, prior to uh, starting bevacizumab. So uh, they were very anemic and they were pr pretty much dependent on the regular scheduled blood transfusions to keep them going. Um, after uh, bevacizumab, and we used a standardized treatment protocol that consisted of eight doses. Uh, four doses of uh, bevacizumab were administered every two weeks, followed by four additional doses each one month apart. We used uh, a standard dosing protocol of about five milligram per kilogram for each of these doses. And we varied that depending on the patient's response. But the initial starting dose was the five milligram per kilogram dosing. And what we found was that uh, uh, intravenous bevacizumab was uh, really uh, spectacularly effective in these patients. Uh, for example, the 16 patients who were transfusion dependent um, by six months out from bevacizumab initiation, only two were still receiving blood transfusions. The rest had basically stopped needing any further blood transfusions. And by nine months, only one patient was still needing blood transfusions. And even these one or two patients, uh, their transfusion frequency actually went down by more than 50%. So in the vast majority of patients, it appeared that uh, IV bevacizumab was uh, very effective in uh, reducing bleeding, both from the nose, also from the intestinal tract. And this worked equally well uh, whether the patients were transfusion dependent or non-transfusion dependent. We also uh, carefully followed these patients. Um, the median uh, follow-up was about 18 months. And the longest patient we had in the study was roughly uh, 43 months or so. And what we found is as the patients went through treatment and on follow-up, they reported a significant improvement in the quality of life. And this seemed to kind of correlate really well with reductions in the severity of epistaxis. Um, in HHT, there's a standard um, epistaxis score that is used called the ESS. And what we found was that there were significant improvements in the epistaxis severity score or the ESS in these patients after bevacizumab. So I wanted to make uh, a couple of points about IV bevacizumab for HHT patients. One, that uh, currently there's no FDA approved treatments for uh, severe uh, bleeding in uh, HHT patients. And so 
IV bevacizumab, uh, the way we used it was we used it as an uh, FDA off-label. So uh, patients were given this medication and explained that uh, you know there's really no FDA-approved treatment, and so we're going to try this as an off-label approach to see if it works, and it did. And the second point I would like to make is in terms of uh, adverse effects. Um, uh, in the 34 patients that we treated, the biggest uh, adverse effect we saw in about 10% of the patients, about four patients, was hypertension. Uh, and this appeared to be treatable, and the, the blood pressure did appear to improve after bevacizumab was, uh, was discontinued. But uh, the hypertension in itself um, was pr the primary side effect. We didn't see any other adverse effect with bevacizumab, and so overall this appeared to be a very effective uh, and safe treatment. What the study really does is uh, lends uh, a lot of credibility uh, to the use of bevacizumab in these patients. Uh, I really uh, think of uh, IV bevacizumab as almost the standard of care uh, for these patients with severe bleeding. The really important uh, thing is that there's really no FDA-approved treatment for severe bleeding in HHD patients. So really this opens up a, a, a fascinating and interesting um, way to treat these patients. Uh, previous studies have reported on this. There were small case reports. We have a large a series from our French colleagues. But really all of this evidence is building up towards uh, uh, showing that bevacizumab is a very effective and also a very safe uh, approach to treating these patients. So uh, in summary, uh, I would like uh, to present this uh, paper as the largest uh, series of patients in North America. I really want to thank you for your interest in HHT. This is a disease that needs uh, more uh, research, uh, more treatment options for these patients who really uh, have uh, a really bad quality of life, as you can imagine, with this uh, severe nose bleeding and anemia. And so I really thank you for your interest. I hope uh, this paper and others really add uh, to the treatment options that uh, HHD patients can uh, reach out for. And I hope this allows other clinicians to start uh, treating these patients uh, in an effective fashion. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.